Processed food, unhealthy food, fried, bubbly, sugar, those will make you bloated. I don't want you to make the mistake of not putting efforts into your nutrition. Welcome to another episode of the Becky Choice Podcast Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you being here listening to me. Right now is already end of August. I hope that you are having a great summer. And summer's time just been flying over here in Canada. We have a really short summer, especially most of the part in Canada, but I think in Toronto too, especially. Our real summer really start in June and end end of the August because afterward it gets kind of cool, cool. It cools down. It's like you, uh, unpredictable with the weather. It can be cold one day and the next day will be like ten degree hotter or like fifteen degree. So yeah, we made the summer the best we could. Uh, the the kids having a lot of fun at camps and I'm able to be more productive at home. And then we went on some vacations. So I'm hoping that you are enjoying your summer as. Well, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's talk about three mistakes moms with diastasis recti or moms with abdominal separation should avoid. All right, so three mistakes. So I am just gonna go right in it. The number one thing is you should stop scaring yourself by doing nothing. You know, I actually hear this very often, at least. Once a day, if not like several times a day, in the DMs in my Instagram, I ask the moms who DM me, ask them about what the biggest struggle is in terms of healing the DR and what has been the biggest challenge. And most of them, I would say a hundred percent of them, when when we do talk about the deeper challenges, it's a lot of、uh, mixed informations out there that really scare them away from doing the exercises. There are a lot of informations online, on research, or on whatever. Right, social media talks about, oh, you should not be doing crunches. You should not be doing sit up. You should not do this. You should bend this way. You should get off, get off, and on the bed this way, that way. While I think to some. Extent these informations are true, but we just put way too much of these fearful based informations on the internet.、Uh, you know, for marketer, this is this is a really great way for to attract、um, anybody, the moms with DR, into their world. Right, you scare them off, and then <laughs> then they will come to you.、Uh, To see what your product has to offer. I mean, it's not just DR, but like any 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 marketer tactics. If there's something you know, with with especially maybe with drugs, right, or with food or with with whatever, like you you scaring them off, and then they will pay some more attention to you. So that's why there's so much these kind of informations out there. You know, I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, so I know why these informations are floating around. But at the same time, I wanted to encourage you to stop. Being fearful and stop thinking that things will worsen your diastasis or things will worsen your body if you do if you do it. From experience and from working with over a few hundreds of clients of DR, I can tell you that majority of the exercises will not hurt you. It will not hurt you. A few crunches will not hurt you. A few plank will not hurt you. Even let's say you're lifting a car seat that is so heavy with fifty pounds baby on it, it will not hurt you. However, what really would hurt you, or like how it will, and why they put the informations out there like that? I mean, to be not honest, I say things like that too. But because I wanted to educate you, they to some extent, and that's why I'm making this episode. It's like to some extent, yes, these movement will hurt you, but only if you keep doing it repetitively, repetitively. You keep forcing yourself. You keep pushing yourself over your limits. Then it could cause a problem, and the problem could be leaking. It could be a hernia. You could injure your back. But that's like anything, though, right? Even if you go to the gym and you lift weights, and normally maybe you lift twenty pounds, and today all of a sudden you know what? I'm gonna do forty pounds, and you keep doing it repetitively over and over again. Yeah, you will injure yourself because your form. Is not good because you can't handle the weight, and so you are using other muscles that shouldn't be using 
to hold hold on to the weight, and so that you're causing yourself in a very awkward form or alignment, and that could injure yourself, right? So, and when we talk about these informations that would oh, you should not be doing crunches, and and actually from research, crunches the pressure. Okay, so if I'm sorry if being a little bit technical, but like you have abdominal pressure in your tummy, and when you're doing crunches, those abdominal pressure it will increase. Okay, the more it increases or it's a lot of pressure in the tummy, then yes, it could worsen. However, like you again, like I say, you have to do it repetitively, do it over and over again, like one episode, two episodes. It's not gonna do any harm. Now, the crunches or plank, when we comparing this data to a cough. <clears throat> or like a sneeze, ha chu, right? The cough and sneeze, that abdominal pressure is actually a lot higher than if you were to do a crunch. Meaning, if you were just to sneeze, and I don't know how often you sneeze, maybe it's allergy season or whatever, right? And you're sneezing all the time. Those pressure, it's actually a lot bigger than where you if you were to do a crunch. So, do you notice that some? After maybe an allergy season, and you cough and sneeze a lot, and then you feel like your tummy protrude more, you feel weaker, and that's because you have been generating a lot of pressure, keep constantly pressuring yourself without having a good foundation or without being able to, let's say, predict that cough or sneeze coming, and you were able to engage and hold on to your stomach before you cough and sneeze, and that pressure kind of pushes to your tummy, pushes to your pelvic floor. Now that's actually. Worse off than doing a crunch or plank, you know, the comedy things that you will see online or bending a certain way. That's actually、uh, generate a lot more pressure. Now, even with with that, I mean, like all of us sneeze and all of us cough. <laughs> It's inevitable, right? And will it make us like oh injure ourselves? Will it make everything worse? No, 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 no. And I don't want you to be so scared about that. It's、just yeah, like I was saying, from experience and from working with people, and even for myself, right? I did a lot of cardios and I did a lot of hit style workout, all kinds of traditional crunches, plank,、uh, downward dog, uh, um, the the yoga poses, right? Those are very prone to bending your back, moving your body not the way you know the what you see online. Saying that you shouldn't do, right? I've been, I done all of that like continuously for three to four months. I mean, whether I would worsen it to what degree, whatever, I don't really know. I couldn't tell you because I never knew that DR existed at, in that first place. I do have some reservations about doing too much. However, you know, I don't want this. The message for me to tell you is, I don't want you to be discouraged to do exercises. It's not that. If you're listening to me on this episode, you kind of already know. Okay, some of the things should be avoided, but it's not like everything. It's not like everything, right? I mean, you can still do a crunch, but don't force it so much that you are that you're doming and bulging to a point that it's like you just keep pushing yourself. Like I was saying with that、uh, weight example analogy, like you you could do twenty, but you're lifting forty pounds, right? You you're doing way too much. And if you are repetitively doing it, then with anything, yeah, it could worsen things, right? But if you're listening to this episode and you understand, you you're a little bit fear, you already have some reservation. With the way you work out, so I don't think you can really do too much damage to it. So I, I encourage you from doing nothing. I want you to do more. I want you to do something. I want to. I want you to follow an exercise regimen. You need to start moving more, right? Those will be very helpful, and you will have more benefits from moving your body to doing nothing. So yeah, that's the number one mistake that you should avoid is not to be fearful. All right. Now the second tips I want to tell you is that about food and nutrition. Now unhealthy food or、um, you know what not watching out what you're eating does not cause a diastasis recti. However, it will the food that you're eating, the food choices that you're making, the processed food, the unhealthy food, fried, bubbly, sugar, those will make you bloated. And now it does not cause you the DR. It does not make it wide. However, these food will make you bloated. And I don't want you to make the mistake of not putting efforts into your nutritions when you're wondering. Oh, you know what? I just need to do some exercises to heal my DR. That's not true. 
Exercise, yes, it will help you to repair some muscles. However, if you're not watching out what you're eating, even if you have no weight to lose, okay, even if you're at your ideal weight, you wanted to watch out that food that cause inflammations. That whether you have uh, regular bowel movements, and you wanted to make sure that f-、uh, the food that is good with you, that you it's not causing gas and burp and bloating. So we wanted to watch out for that. Now, however, if you're somebody who already have weight that you need to lose, you have a lot of body fat, you will wanted to watch out for these food because these food, along with the belly fat and everything, it will just make your tummy look bigger than you are. And when you are constantly being bloated, it will be very inefficient when it comes to doing your exercises because you kind of always have that puff in the front of the tummy. You're not just working on your muscles anymore, but you're also working with the body fat, right, on the belly fat. You also work with working with that extra puffiness. So you have like three things that you are juggling with when you could just try to work on the muscles, but you can't because you have that bloating you need to deal with. You have the body fat, right? So not only will the exercise be a bit inefficient. If you don't look after your food, but your tummy will not look a lot different when you have a lot of body or belly fat. The diastasis or the muscles you're working on is a deep core muscles called the transverse abdominal muscles. These are the muscles that is underneath your six pack. It's the deepest core, deepest layers of the core muscles. So even when you're healing it and everything is progressing well with healing the DR, closing the finger gap or the center meter, by the center meter and the depth is getting shallower, you won't see too much appearance changes if your nu- nutrition sucks. If you don't take care of what you're eating, or if you're just guesstimating what you're eating, you're not watching out the food that causes in,、um, gut inflammations, and you're not, you're not. Paying attention to the portion sizes, then you're constantly in that circle of having that belly that you you're not feeling happy about, even though your DR is improving. I mean, I yeah, it is true because most of us when we want to when we think of about healing the DR, you're thinking about oh my belly will look so much better and flatter and everything. But that's not the case if your body fat is high, or not just high. I mean, more than normal, right? And and you're not working on the nutrition. So, you definitely need to work on the nutrition if you wanted to have, see the overall results. Healing the DR and working on the exercises will make you feel good 100. You will feel relief in your back. I have clients who take、uh, painkiller every day because the back was is killing them. Killing her, and she feels that it's like a stabbing pain every day. So she has to take a Tylenol every day to help with the symptom. But after exercising, she doesn't need to take it anymore, and she's feeling so much better. So like exercises can help you with that, right?、Um, and also, exercises can help reduce leaking. Yes. However, the appearance-wise, and also. If just if just there's some extra weight, belly fat on top of that, it it will take a lot, uh, yeah, more, uh, longer than people who don't. So working on your nutrition is a must. Do not make the mistake of okay, you know what? I just wanted to heal the DR. I'm okay with my food. I just want to eat the way that I'm already eating. You know, not the too healthy food. Then you're just a little bit naive, thinking like that. Okay. Now the third mistake moms with DR should avoid. Is to stop thinking you don't have time. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's so many things that drag us all over the places, and、um, our attention is everywhere. And especially after becoming a mom, you are very overwhelmed. And I get that your time is not your time anymore. Your time is your kids' time. They have their own schedule, and your schedule becomes their schedule. They are sick, then you don't have time. They're not sleeping, you don't have time because you're tired, right? They are at home because、uh, the school is closed. You don't have time. So I get that it's hard to find time, and 
that's also preventing you why you wanted to you do not want, want to start something because you might be thinking oh what the hell heck you know if i can't even if i start and i have to stop next week like why why am i doing what i'm doing stop thinking like that stop thinking you don't have time you make time for it you prioritize what's important for you in this season and i also want you to think about it as a long-term lifestyle like part of brushing your teeth like part of going groceries like part of uh, wearing your clothes right see it as positive as a meditation self-care see it as something that is just part of the routine see it as normal than something that you are like oh i have to make time for it oh blah 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 it doesn't have to be right there are gonna be time that's gonna be tough like those scenarios talking about kids are sick which is very very common and you just have to think about it as okay today what can i do to make the best out of it and if it's nothing and that means sleeping then sleep right if it that if that means just sleeping and if you can drink your three liters of water then do that it doesn't mean that it's just the exercises i mean exercise is part of the formula but it's also about exercising about sleep about stress management about your nutrition about taking care of your well-being those are all part of a holistic approach holistic wellness holistic fitness and i that's how i help my clients in a holistic approach it's not like you go to the gym and you work with a personal trainer personal trainer only work with your body this i'm going to be tough there's time gonna be like why am i doing this and this is where you wanted to push through it now when you sign up for a program let's say my program maybe tummy warrior coaching program and if you're my client you're listening to this is there's always gonna be a season where things are gonna be tougher right uh in winter time let's say right we're in a winter season and snowstorm there's snow outside it's you're trying to grow crops and nothing of course nothing is going to grow you're going to have to get through the season and after winter it's spring right things are getting greener and you can start to seed and you can start to plant and it will get better and summertime yeah you have to prevent it you have to like make sure the the insects are not going to come and the the animals are not going to come and attack your food you have to protect it and then after summer i guarantee that it's fall time right and that's where you harvest and get the fruits that you want but it's a journey it's this season that you need to do certain things so if you do sign up for a program you say you're committed and you're motivated keep that motivation keep that fire in you and do the best you can really take this as the number one list on your list and do not put this as the last thing on your pile thinking that's just another things to do you wanted to put your fitness into your calendar every day and also working on your nutrition be the top of your mind every single day and this will help you to focus and stay disciplined and stay motivated so that you will keep moving and then let's say after uh, four months or five months or six months or however long you're in the program and you will feel that you know what wow i look back into my journey i've done it i have done it and i have done it to the best ability i can you know you have a really good foundations now and now let's just you know what maintain it maintain it is so much easier than the first few months where you have to go harder and stronger to build that foundation and momentum in you but afterward it's so much easier the maintenance phase is so so much easier where you maintain it as more a balanced lifestyle kind of like where i am right now like yeah i really don't have the time and i have other st- stuff that i totally need to prioritize first right I, then i can i have to put my fitness to another day when you're maintaining yes you can but not when you're prioritizing your health over everything else so i encourage you to think about your why why you wanted to start in the first place why is this important to you who is it impacting if you're not attaining your goal in the next six months who is it that is being impacted by how you show up how you show up in your family how you show up in your work how you show up in your in your friend circle right think about these and if like you know what 
fitness isn't really a priority for me right now. I, I don't actually really care too much. Then, then sure, right? Then it's okay, right? But if there's come down to a point where you know what, I really have to do it. I need to do this not just for myself, but also for my family. I wanted to better my health. I really wanted to do this now while I'm young. I want to do take this opportunity that.、Um, You know, I'm on mat leave right now, so I can actually self care myself right now. Then do the things that you say you do. Be that person. Live up to your promise. You know, when you are promising yourself and you do the things you promise yourself, every time and every day you do that, you put a coin in your confidence bank. And next time you do it, it's gonna get easier. It's gonna get easier. Nothing gets easy until you take action and do it. All right. I hope this episode is very helpful for you, and I hope you took some nuggets out of it. And if you do like this episode, please tag me on your social media, Facebook, or on Instagram. I would love to see that you tag and that you watched it or you listened to this, and or DM me and and tell me your comments or feedback and maybe anything that you wanted to hear in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.